What's up, my people? So it is 70 degrees here today in New York, and I took the day off. So we're headed to the marina to get into some fun. So check this out. 2023 and season four. I think this will even go to 2024. I don't know. All I can tell you is that we've been sailing the boat and enjoying ourselves. Minimal amount of boat work this year, but that's okay. I want to enjoy my family, I want to enjoy the boat, and I also want to enjoy some boat drinks. Nothing better than being sun-kissed on the uh, water. I hope that you guys have really enjoyed these videos, and if there's something you want to see, I implore you to reach out and ask me, and I'm more than happy to record it for you. Boat work is my favorite, so if you have some need for a helping hand, by all means, just reach out. I'm here. But until then... I hope you guys uh, hit that like and subscribe button, and cheers to you in the water. Oh, all right, so we are here um, at Artemis. I just plugged her in, and today I'm going to be sanding this down and then uh, fairing it. Tomorrow I'll come back to sand the fairing down. Um, water's not out in the yard yet, so I can't paint, but I'm also going to be, you know, where I first started this, um, some of my ablative paint was basically still on the boat, so I got to sand this down again, uh, get that a little bit better. I'll probably do that tomorrow as well, um, so I can get her ready for paint. There's a few spots where the ablative went, and the Rostonium came off. Again, I've had very good luck with it. Um, I might consider, not this year, because uh, I don't really feel like doing the whole bottom over again, but within the next two years, probably switching over to a non-ablative from Total Boat, but um, I just love their products. It's just awesome. Anyway, my zinc's fared well this year, and I've got to do nothing with that, so today I'm just going to basically be doing this. I'm going to show you, um, if you remember the other videos, how we're going to finish this today. So it's just a lot of sanding, and I'm going to walk around to the other side. Um, so we'll get it sanded and then fared with the total boat total fare. I can never say it right. And then as soon as the water comes on, we can uh, rinse this bottom and get it touched up and ready to go. Again, I don't really have much to do. Just um, where the other marina launched me when they weren't supposed to, I could not get here. So this is this is a uh, random paint, whatever the hell they put on there for me. So just a couple touch-ups on the paint and we're done. But this is the big project for today. So we're going to finish the back of the keel. Let's get it going on this. I don't know about you guys, but this time of the year when it starts getting a little bit warmer every now and again, it's just, uh, it tickles my fancy. So today, because uh, I keep getting slack, I am using a PAPR. Um, this runs off of a battery. She is still covered in green paint from my last job, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, you may not be able to hear me too well in this, but we'll try. Hmm. Well, all right. So what I was looking to do there was just get some of the high edges off um, and kind of make it flush. Now, I don't like when I'm using chop strand to get it silky smooth. I like the chop strand because now the fairing compound has something to bite into. But I took all the high pieces off. Um, again, don't want to go too crazy. This is my opinion. You don't have to listen to me. But if you're watching me, you probably are. So um, just getting it smooth on the edges. I don't want to have anything bubbling through. I am going to have to hit that again. But um, no, I don't. It just popped right off because it was on paint. So anyway, um, if you remember what we did here, um, I had ground everything out again. Uh, took the old fiberglass patch out that I screwed up on, ground it all out, smoothed it, and then, um, oh, there we go, uh, got the new patch in, and now we just smoothed it again, the sander. This is all rebuilt, looks nice. I'm going to go do the other side, and then I'm going to mix up some total fare, and we're going to fare this out. We're going to leave it. Today is a beautiful day for this. It's uh, 70 degrees, so it'll cure quick today, probably within, hmm, I don't know, three, four hours. I'll, but I'm going to come back tomorrow and we'll sand it again. Um, but let me get the other side done and then we'll show you exactly what we're going to do here. All right, so the same is now done on this side. I just got the sharp edges off. And now comes the fun part, the fairing. Um, I did leave a bit of a ridge here because I'm going to bring the fairing to that. And then I can sand that back down until I see black. 
which will give me the perfect line. This is also, you can see, where my Rust-Oleum paint is coming off because that is where I did not get enough of the ablative off. So I gotta run a grinder down this whole side in that crotch where I couldn't get the sander like to really do it well. I wanna say grinder, I mean a wire wheel. We'll pull all that off and that'll get repainted this year. I'm not even concerned about that. This was the, uh, the big deal. So this is now smooth to the touch. I'm gonna go blow on it. Get as clean with the rag as I can, and then we're gonna mix up our compound and we're gonna put it on right now. So ADD. All right, so again, part uh, part B, part A. This is the Total Fair. This is my favorite product in the world for boat work. And just in case, I'm gonna show you how to, um, to mix this stuff up again. Uh, good. I use these little 3M squeegees. I pick them up in bulk and um, I find it to be the best thing in the world to mix this stuff. I will say I did forget my rubber gloves, which sort of sucks. We'll try to keep clean, but I never can. Ah, bummer. I guess I could go up into the boat, but I really don't feel like doing that. Yeah, I gotta go into the boat, guys. I'll be back. <laughs> I got gloves. So, now we can do this. Have I put these on, we're gonna mix this up and we're gonna get this fared out. Mm. I, will, uh, I will say, if you're wearing anything you like while using this stuff, take it off. I just took off my watch. Um, highly recommend doing that. Okay, one more tip with this. Two spoons. Why do I say two spoons? A, they're equal portions. So when you're using A, if you get any of the B into that, you're gonna have issues, right? So um, I like to just scoop it. That's one, two, I'm going to go with three scoops here, three of part A, and now what I'll do is I'll just kind of mush it to the side, I keep, whoop, tap, keep my spoon with it, alright, so it doesn't matter when you start mixing, but I don't want to get part A and part B mixed up, because if you do that, inside this container, potentially, you could um, ruin everything. So I'm gonna put the lid back on that. It looks like I may have a scoop or two left in there. So we did three scoops. I'm gonna take three scoops of part B, the blue. And I'm gonna put it right next to part A, two, and then for good measure, This stuff also lasts if you um, keep your lids on. Three. Okay. So now we have one, two, and three. Three and three. Sorry. Next. I'm just going to do this. Uh, this. Tap you. Now what I'll do is I'll use the spoons to get the remainder off of each spoon the best I can. And just get it down there again I try to this stuff's like gold to me so I, I try to get every bit of it off both sides of the spoon throw it in there one more good they're both pretty clean I'll put them into my junk pile now this stuff does take a hot minute to mix okay it's not like it's a, a two-second job you want to get a green color. The reason I like the plate, actually I shouldn't have thrown my spoons in there because there's going to be a little bit of mess here. Anyway, we're going to keep turning this until it starts to resemble a nice green color. Now I am wearing polarized lenses, so uh, and I like them very much. I'm going to take them off so I can get a proper uh, look at the color. Give me one second. We got a phone call right there. Anyway, I'm still mixing. As you can see, the color is now turning green. Uh, I was on the phone for about, I don't know, five minutes or so. Uh, when I get to this point where everything starts to junk up, which is what's happening right now, um, I grab the spoon, doesn't matter which one, 
and I'll start scraping it off of here and then place this anywhere away from the rocks and then I'll start grabbing all the little bits that aren't mixed putting them in I find a spoon really does a great job now if you've seen me do this stuff in the past sometimes I use a lawn sign and ooh, got a piece of gravel we don't want that in there the lawn signs work awesome but I kind of like the plate for small batches. Like I was saying earlier, it's it's really good for mixing up like a batch this size. Um, I can throw it away. I don't have to worry about it. By the way, if you guys ever become YouTubers and people start walking by you while you're just talking to yourself, it's, it's kind of funny <laughs> the way people look at you. They're like, what the hell is this guy doing over there? He's just chatting with himself about nothing. All right, so now we're getting to the point. It's like adult Play-Doh, guys. Just scrape it, move it around. I promise you it's the best product you'll ever use on your boat. It holds up. It just holds up. I'm almost there. I can see a couple of streaks. I don't like streaks, so what I'll do is just sort of pull, pull. This is straining on your hands, just so you know. That looks real nice. A little bit there. A little bit here. All right, but that's the color we're going for. Hopefully, a piece of fiberglass in there. Let me see. Let's see if this is the lawn. Yes. You see that color? That's what we need. Okay. So now, I like to start from scratch. So I'm going to pull all this off if I can. Pull that off. Get it to the corner. And then I will actually wipe this down the best I can. And then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start to apply it. That's probably the best I'm gonna get it. And I really don't have anything I can use with me right now. But I do have gloves and that's all that really matters. So I'm gonna pull this all to here. Load up. There we go, nice and loaded. I'm gonna go ahead and clean my hands and I'm going to re-angle the camera so you can watch me fare this out. All right, I hope that's a good angle. Now, remember, if you are wearing gloves and you put your hands down on the rocks, you will more than likely destroy your gloves. So, again, I'm loading this up. Come here. Pull. Oh, there's a little bit that wasn't mixed too well. Let's fix that again. And I like to pull down. Grab another bunch. Start here. I'm going to pull it down and around. Now it's, it's just like spackling, guys. So um, you're looking for high spots you want to start, and you're going to pull it down until you have no high spots. The smoother you make it now, the easier it's going to be to finish. I'm just taking small cuts. I know I need some in there. I'm going to come up, pull, pull. Pull. That looks great. However, I have a little bit here on the trailing edge. And I'm going to pull it down. Come across where I know I don't need any. Come over here and pull it around. That looks good. Now, the top lip that I have here, right here, I'm gonna actually smear it up on that lip. And again, when you start working with this stuff, you're gonna find what works for you. So, as you can see, I just fared it up into the paint, not a big deal. Um, why is that not a big deal? Because I'm gonna be sanding that off anyhow. And I'm just gonna come right here, grab the next piece, and I'm going to smooth this the best that I can, starting from the very top, pulling down. Again, this is very, I wouldn't say difficult to sand, but it ain't easy. So now i got to touch the camera, and hopefully you guys aren't recording when you're doing this. And I'm going to let that sit, but I'm going to go get the other side, so I'm just going to move you over there. 
So again, I'm gonna load up my squeegee here. I'm gonna start from the top. And it all will become clear as you start to uh, get to the other side. Like now I can see where I have to pull it around. And again, if you leave it thick, like for instance on the, the, the tail edge here, I'm leaving it a little thick. It's sort of, it's, it's tough to, like I said before, it's very tough to sand it, but um, it's not impossible. So you wanna make sure you're covering any low spots. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that at the end, but this will be the hardest spot to sand uh, tomorrow. And even then, it shouldn't be that, that bad. Because I am getting the real nice, mm, it's tacky, it's tacking up. All right, before it all tacks up, let's get this whole piece done. Bam! I'm done. Let's have a look. I gotta take the glove off first though. Okay. Alright, so this is now fared. Um, it's not sanded, so we're gonna let this dry. And then, ooh, like where I sanded before, I have to fare that real quick. Um, so we're gonna let this dry overnight, and then tomorrow I'll be back and we'll record the sanding process. Um, but that's it. That's how I fixed this whole mistake that I made. Again, well, alright. Here we are, this is day two, and um, this is solid as a rock, this stuff. So now what we gotta do is sand it down and get ready for, uh, for paint. Uh, looking good, feeling good. Yeah, again, this product uh, hardens to steel. So, ooh, a little piece I gotta take care of. Um, yeah, let's get this sanded and then I'm done with this. As a matter of fact, I'm not gonna be sanding um, anything in here today. Apparently they're turning the water on in two weeks. So I'm just gonna wait for that and then I'm gonna go hit all this with the wire wheel, get all that heavy stuff off and then we'll be, uh, we'll be good to paint again. And I have the paint, so cool. Uh, let's get this sanded. This stuff is very dusty, so make sure you are wearing your uh, mask. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you're wearing some sort of BPE. So one pro tip would be um, bring an extra shirt with you um, because you're going to be dusty as all hell from this. So I, I still have a little bit more here. You can still see some low spots, which I might just fill in with paint. Um, but if you saw what I was doing, I was rounding, you can shape this. So where all that extra was, I'm gonna have to do a little bit more right here. I can feel it, a little ridge. But remember, keep fluid. You wanna shape it. Um, and that's basically it. I mean, that is something the Lord made right there. Got a couple of quick, more, little more touch-ups. I want to do some by hand in here, just with a disc at the end. But that's how simple and fast this stuff is to work with. Good 60 grit sandpaper. Um, eats right through it with a decent um, orbital. And um, yeah, just take your time. That's all. Let's do the other side. Now I'm going to take off the pad and just do some by hand, just to get it the way I want. So let's see, can you even see what I'm doing?
All right, that simple. Um, huh. I'm covered in compound. It is 12.07. I started this at 11.55. That is sanded down. That's what good tools do for you people. Um, I know it's Ryobi, but don't knock the Ryobi. That is good to go. Ready for paint? Feels nice. Trailing edge is good. Um, yeah, we're done. So we got, again, we have, we dug this back down to, um, to lead and glass. We re-glassed everything um, and then let that harden, sanded it this spring and re it. Now all it needs is paint and I need to go through and knock off all the heavy paint. Ugh, now I'm dirty. But yeah, she'll be, uh, she'll be back in the water real soon. Guys, not a hard job. Um, really, with the products today, such as the Total Boat, uh, Total Fair, their resin, the pumps. I mean, you can go get a thing of resin, five to one pumps, and you've got your stuff mixed. You're good to go. This isn't scary. This isn't hard. This is something anybody can do. So, again, just reach out to me if you have questions. Um, you know, I, the marinas are going to kill me for saying this, but stop paying so much money to hire people to do this. Look, if you got the money and the means to do it, feel free. But you want to enjoy the sport of sailing or you know, the hobby or, you know, relaxation of just being on a boat and you can get yourself a cheap boat and you've got some time and some money to put into it. And again, not a lot. You don't need a lot of money. You need a lot of time. But this is all very doable. Um, what you just saw there, that patch at a marina, I bet you that was uh, two grand. Easy. Cost me, I'm trying to think what that actually cost me. Probably cost me 80 bucks. I mean, and all that material that I've used on here really didn't cost me anything, just my time because I had that material. So, <laughs> you know, you're talking some total fare, some resin, some fiberglass mat, um, just a lot of time. It's not expensive to do. And uh, you got this. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about fiberglassing, about fairing, about anything, please just hit me up and we will walk you through it. And again, cheers. Don't forget to drop an anchor on that like and subscribe button. It would mean the world to me. Cheers. Let me know if you need anything.